Health officials in China are trying to identify a mysterious strain of pneumonia. China ordering a quarantine for the entire city of Wuhan, where the contagious coronavirus was first detected and is spreading fast. Detected or suspected in at least 11 countries across the globe. Concerns of a global pandemic are spreading from a virus that's now reached the United States. The Washington state man has died from coronavirus, the first death from that disease here in the U.S. The NBA is now urging its players to avoid high-fiving fans. Major event organizers and cities face the difficult choice of whether to cancel big public events. The NBA is telling teams they should be prepared for the possibility of playing games in empty arenas. The teams insist they won't play without fans. If I show up to an arena, there ain't no fans in there. <laughs> I ain't playing. I mean, we just got to be prepared for anything and at the same time keep living, keep doing what we do. NBA, MLB, NHL, MLS, banning all non-essential personnel from their locker rooms until further notice. The Golden State Warriors confirming they will play without fans tomorrow night. March Madness will also be closed to the general public. Today, the World Health Organization officially calling it a pandemic. It's a regular road trip. Rudy and I, we generally sit across the aisle from each other. Royce, Emmanuel, and Bojan behind me, and then Mike behind, Rajon Tucker. Got there the night before. We're pretty excited for this game. Just ready to go. We knew Rudy was going to be out for the game. He's, you know, feeling a little bit sick. When we get to the game, we warm up. Everything is going real smooth, and next thing you know, you see a bunch of guys in uh, suits run out. I thought it was the FBI. You knew something was going on as soon as you looked out on the court. I was two rows from the court. You saw people that you usually don't see during that time of the game. You saw the Thunder's assistant general manager talking to officials, their team doctor, Donnie Strack, who was also talking to officials. There was so much confusion, so many little red flags as an NBA reporter that said something is different and wrong. And I got a call from the league office. Fans were in the seats, ready to go. We were now five or 10 minutes past the point we were supposed to tip. I've been part of game delays before. It was like a leak coming out of the ceiling. So it really felt like that outside of the guys rushing the floor. We were just told we just got to go back. I walked back thinking, all right, we'll be back out in like 45 minutes. At first, we'd heard from an Oklahoma City television reporter that law enforcement was on their way to the arena to help evacuate. And so our first indication was, is this a bomb threat? and we got to the locker room. We were told Rudy had it. Um, at that point, we were kind of just silent. That's what became scary. Under unforeseen circumstances, the game tonight has been postponed. You are all safe. Thank you for coming out tonight. And good night, fans. Our Charles Tarania at The Athletic actually broke the news that Rudy Gobert had coronavirus. In, in that moment, we made the decision we should be taking a hiatus. There was no hesitation. There was no call to the Board of Governors. There was no consultation with anybody. Adam Silver just shut the league down. This is crazy. This can't be true. I mean, it's not within the realm of possibilities. It's just, it seemed more like out of a movie than reality. I honestly thought we were going to be like, all right, we're going back to the hotel. Then to come to find out the hotel that we stayed at was under lockdown. Uh, no hotels would, would take us. We're sitting down kind of outside the door where the players leave, and you're seeing health officials come through with boxes. When I saw them come in with their suits and equipment and masks, stuff we see today, I thought, like, all right, this is like the real deal. 
The reporters that travel and cover the team, we're in direct contact with these players all the time. We're in very close proximity, talking right next to their faces. They got us all tested, including the team and the traveling party, and left the arena a little after 1 a.m. I slept about 20 minutes that whole night. 8.30 the next morning, that's when I found out that I had it. One of the scariest experiences of my life. My biggest concern was I had just seen my mother and my sister four or five days before that, and called them like, look, you have to get tested right away. I went back home and I had to separate myself from my family. I'm in the basement uh, by myself and I have no windows in my basement. You don't know if it's 4 p.m. or 4 a.m. It's Monday, will it come on Tuesday? Tuesday, temperature's the same, will it come on Wednesday? Wednesday, will it come on Thursday? And I was down there for, for about 10, 11 days. At the end of the day, I'm 23, you know, I'm a kid and I, I, I still have fears. Obviously having the virus, I feel a different way than most. I wish people understood a little bit more. Once the NBA shut down, it felt like the first domino had fallen and it was just a matter of time for every other domino to start falling, for the leagues to start saying, this is not safe. March Madness, one of the greatest spectacles in all of sports, has been knocked out. And the four major professional sports leagues in North America have been silenced. For how long is anyone's guess? The season just began off kilter. Uh, the tweet by the Rockets GM uh, about the protesters in Hong Kong. And then we mourn the loss of David Stern, the former commissioner. And then on that Sunday, when we got the news on Kobe, it was, uh, you're just empty. So people were already kind of in this emotional vortex and uh, this emotional conflict when all of a sudden, boom, here's a pandemic. I don't think the gravity hit the players until there was the first positive test in, in the NBA. It was just a really grave wake up call about what we were about to be confronted with. And then for that to be compounded by then having unprecedented level of racial conversations as we're talking about police violence and um, institutional racism and systemic oppression. In this situation where my humanity is at stake, where the humanity of my people is at stake, do I want to be the entertainment right now? I think a big reason why this entire conversation that we're having in this country is at the level that it is, is because there has been no sports to distract anybody, is because we have no choice but to sit here and, and reflect. We have a moment in time. People are going to look back, our kids are going to look back at this and say, you are a part of that. I'm glad it's something that's sparked a newer conversation of having athletes lead the charge, having athletes that are uh, not just basketball players, but that can, you know, lead and speak on the issue uh, intelligently. March 11th is the night that changed the world forever. I, I don't think it's just basketball. I think it stopped the world in its tracks. It stopped our country in its tracks. Your love of team and your love of sport and the game you've always played is colliding with your love of family and your love of spouse and what's best. And there's not an easy answer in there. I don't know if we're going to see games played the way we've always seen games played with 20,000 screaming fans. It 
is sports ever going to be the same? If I told you I knew that answer, uh, I'd be lying to you.